It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. One of you lies down while the other lies a lot. You both are horsing around with the truth, but you get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. Let's say that your life was on the line, all right? Let's say that you had a big trial and you were in a court of law and you were fighting for your life. The eyes of the, the country, nay, the world, were upon you. And you had to present your case in court and you had to call your star witness to the sand. And you ushered in your witness through the court. And you said, here, judge, I present to you the witness that shall prove my case. And the star witness looked like this. This was, uh, this was the guy. This is the guy that you, uh, that you, that you ushered forward into the court, uh, to say, look, look world, we have a case. I bring to you the, uh, the knights, the knights of the, the very, very round, very sad table. Here, ladies and gentlemen, we have Michael Cohen. This is a man who was Donald Trump's sleazebag lawyer for a long time. Listen, you know, say what you will. If you're in the celebrity business, you need a kind of, you need a cleanup guy. These are the kind of guys that have zero morals. They're the guys who will turn in a, in a second, right? On you, uh, on anyone for an extra buck, okay? And Michael Cohen is here, ladies and gentlemen, turning on Donald Trump. And what he's been doing throughout this entire trial is doing absurd lives where he tries to grift off of this. He's been collecting donations because of what he's been doing to Trump. Now, we're starting to sense a trend here. The judge's daughter accepts donations for what she's doing to Trump. So the, ju so the judge's daughter has been fundraising for the better part of the last decade on trying to put Donald Trump in prison She's raised hundreds of millions of dollars based on SEC reports uh, on doing that. The judge's daughter is a person who has donated to Joe Biden's campaign. The judge himself has donated to Joe Biden's campaign. And now Michael Cohen is trying to make money off of this. Stormy Daniels, on the other hand, has lost in court and owes Donald Trump over a half a million dollars that she doesn't have. Stormy Daniels, of course, is somebody who is a repugnant individual. And these are the two people, the two pillars that Alvin Bragg has rested his entire case on. And by the way, if you're Alvin Bragg and you're resting somewhere, you better have a very strong pillar to rest on. You know what I mean? You, be, you don't want to, you don't want that. So you have this situation where the entire event that is happening in New York is crumbling and it's hysterical. Now, yesterday we used the term tire fire and I saw some people in the, in the comment section being like, yo, uh, what, like, like, that's funny. What do you mean by that? This is what I mean by that. This is what I mean by tire fire. As you go to Wikipedia, you type in tire fire and you find that there are these like burn pits in the con around the world where all the world's used tires go. And in order to get rid of these, uh, th this, this rubber, they actually light them on fire. This happens in Kuwait. Uh, this happens in the Middle East. So they go to these desolate places where nobody wants to live and nobody wants to breathe the air and they light tires on fire and you can see the flames from space. So the International Space Station swoops around uh, the Middle East and you can actually see the black flames from space from the tire fire. And that's what the, that's the trial in New York right now. That's, this is the trial in New York. The entire country, the entire world can see the black, ashen, putrid, despicable, noxious fumes of what the Biden regime is trying to do to Donald Trump in New York. It's embarrassing. You can see it from space. Okay. Anyone, everyone and anyone can see it. Now it, it would take seeing this from space for Republicans in Congress to do anything about it. Luckily, ladies and gentlemen, Republicans in Congress are, are finally actually uh, trying to do something about it. Uh, Republicans in Congress are now referring the star witness, the, uh, the night, the night of the very round table, Michael Cohen, uh, to the DOJ for prison. Why? Well, for the same reason that Democrats have referred Steve Bannon for prison, Peter Navarro for prison. The guy lied under oath, refused to comply with subpoenas in Congress. And, um, 
Well, this is a very, very good thing. Let's read, ladies and gentlemen, here's our top story of the day. DOJ urged to probe Trump fixer Michael Cohen for lying to Congress six times. Former Trump lawyer fixer Michael Cohen got slapped Wednesday with another criminal referral to the Justice Department. The House Judiciary Committee uh, Chairman Jim Jordan, uh, Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer urged the DOJ to investigate Cohen for lying to Congress six times in 2019. We again request the Department of Justice investigate whether Mr. Cohen's testimony warrants a charge. Now, this is really interesting tactic. Uh, let's take a step back and, and ask why. <laughs> In a really, really interesting turn of events, because uh, similar to the end of The Godfather, every person who decided to testify against Joe Biden wound up in prison. Isn't that shocking? Even the guys who are paid FBI informants wound up in prison. Nobody ever wound up in prison for lying to the federal government with the PP dossier with Hillary Clinton and her attempts to rig the election. She did the exact same thing. She did a much worse thing. Hillary Clinton had to pay $100,000 in fines, never had to go to trial, but had to pay a bunch of fines for uh, misappropriating campaign funds. This is what they're trying to get Trump on. Nobody ever went to prison. The, all the people who testify against Joe Biden, boom, every single one of them, jail immediately. Devin Archer, the FBI guy, all of them, boom, jail immediately. Michael Cohen, ladies and gentlemen, they are now saying, uh, obviously lied to Congress. That's a crime. Let's lock him up. Huh? Republicans on the Judiciary Committee asked the DOJ in 2019 to investigate Cohen over the testimony that he delivered to the panel in February. Feds declined to take up the referral at the time. Six alleged infractions include Cohen claiming that he hadn't tried to get a job in Donald Trump's White House, the insistence that he hadn't called for the creation of a social media account, uh, women for Cohen, denying any business, and so on and so on and so on. Not a good thing to lie to Congress, crime to lie to Congress, uh, crime punishable by like five years, up to five years per lie. Get called to Congress, don't lie. Okay, better just take the fifth. But Michael Cohen is a known liar, a committed and convicted perjurer. This guy's just a scumbag, okay? He's just a dirty, filthy lawyer. Now you could say Donald Trump shouldn't have hired this guy. Donald Trump, when he was working with him, was celebrity apprentice, was Hollywood celebrity, like these, these guys, these Hollywood scumbag lawyers. Hunter Biden has like a Hollywood scumbag lawyer. Remember Hunter Biden comes, crashes the hearing about himself? This is like these scumbag, these like dirtbag attorneys. I mean, they're really, literally the scum of the earth. And sometimes you need guys like that if you're at a certain level of celebrity. I'm not trying to explain it. I don't think it's a good thing. But it's just, it is what it is. It's the same thing as the nuisance lawsuits. It's just, it is the way the world works. I wish we lived in a perfect world. I wish we lived in the Garden of Eden. But ladies and gentlemen, we uh, unfor unfortunately don't. Now, now uh, what will happen next? Will the DOJ put Michael Cohen in jail and stop him from preventing in this trial? No, I wouldn't put my money on it. But is this something that is obviously going to uh, hurt the prosecution? and result in a hung jury, not to get Stormy Daniels excited or anything. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, absolutely will. Uh, these witnesses that they're calling, they only have two star witnesses. All the witnesses have been very good for Donald Trump. They have two star witnesses, Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen. And they're both like such duplicitous garb. They're, 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 again, they're just garbage fit for the tire fire pile. Here's Michael Cohen admitting to lying under oath. Let's go. I've been convicted on five counts of tax evasion. You stood before multiple congressional committees before today and raised your right hand and swore an oath to be honest. And you lied to those congressional committees. Is that correct? Previously? Correct. Yes, sir. A reporter for the magazine Vanity Fair has reported that she interviewed you the very next day on February 14th, 2018, about the payment and reimbursement. And she wrote, quote, last February 14th, I interviewed Cohen in his office about the statement he gave the FEC in which he said Trump didn't know about the stormy payment or reimburse him for it. Do you recall this meeting with the reporter? I do. Mm, OK, I have been convicted of lying 1700 times. Star witness, Biden. Star witness. I love this guy. Love this guy. Finally, a guy that I can relate with. Michael Cohen, again, fundraising off of all this. It really is remarkable. Like what a cottage industry it is to go and prosecute Donald Trump and then make a bunch of make a fortune off it. And I'm not talking about selling mugshots. OK, although I do. Man, I do love that mugshot. I do. I just I love that. 
Rawr. Rawr. I love that mugshot. It's mad. You don't get the scale. It's a big mugshot. It's four feet tall. It's a big, big mugshot. We have a practical, we have a, a real studio. We have like a practical effects, not a green screen. It's a big mugshot. We can make it bigger though. Make it bigger. Maybe we get maybe we get it. Maybe we get an eight foot tall one. Maybe we just do the whole wall as mugshot. This Christmas, I actually bought some of the Trump wrapping paper with the mugshot on it. Did you? Do you have we have shirts with the mugshot on it? Uh, I love that mugshot. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about these people. I'm talking about this. Here's here's Michael Cohen on TikTok. He's raising money. Okay, so on TikTok, you like you can donate and you raise money on TikTok. Here he is trashing MAGA on TikTok. He's a star witness. Here you go. He's MAGA scared, Donald's scared, and he's every right to be. Let me tell you something. This process, I don't care how tough you think that you are. You're this big, literally this big. When the process, when the system comes after you, you are this big. Almost as big as Donald's mushroom pack. Dog, I, 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 I. Is that, is that, yeah, it's just like a, it's just like an episode of Law and Order, A Few Good Men. This is just like, it's exactly what I've always wanted. It's, it's exactly what I've always saw in the American legal system. You remember that episode of Law and Order where the witness kept going on TikTok, putting on cartoon helmets with rap music and a bunch of like little, a bunch of gifts all over his face? And talking about putting the people that he's testifying against in prison. Remember that? Remember the upstanding star witnesses, the, the bravery? It's like Aaron Brockovich. Really? It's, it's unbelievable. Here we go. Here's the t-shirt that he wore last night uh, on TikTok. Here, he wore a, a t-shirt of Donald Trump in behind bars. There's a screenshot of his uh, TikTok last night from ALX. Here he is. TikTok, like, it's a, so he can do this. So he can do that. Like, consider this, consider the world, consider the, the landscape here. So this, <laughs> this, this guy, this jack wagon can go and wear a shirt of Donald Trump in prison and can fundraise, but Donald Trump's not allowed to say his name. Donald Trump's not allowed to talk. He's not allowed to talk about this guy. Do you like UFC? You ever been to UFC? Eric's here in the studio. Eric likes UFC. Eric likes Sugar Sean. And uh, if you went to a UFC match, which we actually intend to do, we know when his next fight is, and your favorite fighter had their hands duct taped together and they were brought in the middle of the ring and Dana White allowed not only like the fighter, but like his entire team to come out and start punching him and he couldn't fight back, hands duct taped behind his back. You'd say, that's not fair. That's garbage. Why did I pay money for this? I think I might file a legal action. I think you've defrauded me. This isn't a fair fight. They've gagged Donald Trump for talking about this guy. This guy can wear a shirt of Donald Trump behind bars and fundraise off it. And Donald Trump ain't allowed to talk about it. So Donald Trump is appealing his gag order. So Trump, breaking news this morning, has requested an expedited appeal of the gag order. So Trump can actually defend himself against these mongoloids. Here we go. Thank you very much. Uh, what Biden is doing, with respect to Israel is disgraceful. If any Jewish person voted for Joe Biden, they should be ashamed of themselves. He's uh, totally abandoned Israel, and nobody can believe it. I guess he feels good about it because he did it as a political decision. You have to do the right decision, not the political decision, but he did a very bad thing. I just want to let you know that we've just filed a major motion in the appellate division concerning the absolutely unconstitutional gag order, where I'm essentially not allowed to talk to you about anything meaningful that's going on in the case, and many good things are come, going on with the case. It shouldn't have been filed. Uh, they had this morning the, the top legal scholars in the country. This is a Frankenstein case. They took a dead misdemeanor. They attached it to a dead alleged federal felony and zapped it back into life. So many of us are just amazed to watch us actually walk into court because it's not a recognizable crime that any of us have seen. It's Jonathan Turley. Uh, I've been doing this for 60 years and I don't understand what crime he's been charged with. Nobody understands this. 
I just don't get the crime. There's no evidence of any crime whatsoever. This is a sham. That's Alan Dershowitz. And these are people that are, they speak their minds. They're not for me, they're for justice. Uh, this is another one. This is without precedent in American history, only with the desperation of President Joe Biden and his fanatic left-wing enforcers that it become possible to think about arresting and jailing their major political opponent. This case must be taken out of Judge Merchant's hands because he's totally conflicted. Judge Merchant is totally conflicted, like probably no judge has ever been conflicted before. Here's another one, Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg. His prosecution of former President Donald Trump violates both the federal and state constitutions. This is a prosecutor making it up as he goes along. Due process worthy of the names does not tolerate that. So these are statements. This is Andrew McCarthy made that statement. Highly respected. A judge is allowing wide scope of information that has absolutely nothing to do with the case. That's Rebecca Rosewood on Fox News. Uh, today we have Rick Scott here, Senator Rick Scott. We have other politicians here. We have people, many people in support. Uh, the uh, outside of this building is closed down like Fort Knox. Nobody's ever seen. We have so many police down here, New York's finest, and they are New York's finest. They're just told what to do, but uh, they don't have them at Columbia. They don't have them at uh, NYU or any other places. This is like an armed camp down here, and you have nothing to worry about. Believe me, your problem is from the left, it's not from the right. Big problem from the left, it's from within, from within our country. That's a bigger, in my opinion, a bigger danger than China or Russia. You have it from the outside and you have it from within. From within is a bigger danger to our country, and it's from in, from the left, not from the right. But Rick Scott's here and he said you can't go after political persecutions. This is a shame. This should not be happening in our country. And Senator Ted Cruz put out a very strong statement about attacking Donald Trump and the American voter. It's an attack on both. This is purely and simply election interference. There is no case. So that's the way it is. But here we sit after two and a half weeks. And I think you'll see some very revealing things today. And uh, I want to thank my lawyers. They've done a very good job, but I'd rather thank them after it's over as opposed to now because uh, we don't want them to get carried away. It's, uh, there's no case. Should have never been brought out. Alvin Bragg didn't want to bring it. Cy Vance didn't want to bring it, and he didn't. He left. He didn't bring it. Everybody's looked at it. Southern District didn't bring it. Federal elections didn't bring it. It's also a federal case, not a state case, which they're not allowed to do, but these are minor details. So I just want to thank you for being here, and we'll see you later in the afternoon. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, my apologies. I should always sort of let you know when it's going to be a longer clip. You know the the show, the policy that we will have on this program. That was Donald Trump from this morning. He did break the news that they are now appealing to the removal of his gag order, but I always try and explain that it's going to be a longer clip because we're not going to censor the president, right? Like everyone else, you know, this is the tactic now. When we, we watch these tactics, we have a singular superpower on this program. Uh, we are live. We pay attention. Pattern recognition is what we do here. And so the pattern that we've re recognized is that in 2016, less so in 2020, uh, but not, never in 2024, the strategy has been never let Trump speak. Don't let him on the airwaves. Don't let him talk. We have too many examples to line up for you, but you'll notice every single time Donald Trump gives a speech, CNN cuts away, MSNBC cuts away. And these people, the, the pundits immediately begin pontificating about like, oh, this is what Donald Trump meant. Oh, this is what he meant. We're not allowed to let him speak. We won't let him speak. We have a clip. Let's Let's load up this clip. It was from this weekend. It's amazing. Uh, on MSNBC, there's like some, some, you know, doofus, some slob on MSNBC being like, the, the, Joe Biden shouldn't debate Donald Trump. Why would you give him the platform to debate Donald Trump? Like, it's amazing. Like, they, the, 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 the strategy is so obvious. The strategy is so, like, so, so laid bare now. Don't give Donald Trump any oxygen. 
anyway. I don't mean to go off on a, a separate tangent. We have more to talk. We have too much to talk about today. But that's why we will play Donald Trump. We'll carry his speeches live. We'll play Donald Trump when he talks. We'll give you, we hope you appreciate that because nobody, like virtually no one else is doing it. And so we're trying to counter that strategy. So anyway, I should have told you this four minute clip. And it's like, you know, ultimately it's the point of this rant. I'm not the only person ranting, ladies and gentlemen. Hillary Clinton is ranting as well. Hillary Clinton, <laughs> you're going to love this. You know, it is like a perfect clip to play back to back. Donald Trump heading into court for a fake case with a fake judge who donated to Joe Biden, who's a Stalinist. These people are Stalinists. Try not to yell. Ben, don't yell. Stalinist! These people, as a fake judge, it's a fake court, it's a fake charge. It is going to have an intended result of simply keeping Donald Trump off the campaign trail. And Hilda Beast, fresh off of the failure of her uh, intersectional feminist Broadway show, decides to crawl out from under a rock somewhere and then <laughs> claim that Donald Trump is going to try and jail his political opponents. Where's my, uh, where's the stress ball? Where's the pillow I can, I can, I can, I can scream into. I don't actually, I don't, poor Eric's looking around. I don't actually have a stress ball. We should get one. We should get one. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Hillary Clinton has the bloody cheek to go on to national TV and to complain about how Donald Trump, who's in court just down the street from her, as Joe Biden's trying to jail Donald Trump, that Donald Trump will be the one trying to jail his political opponents. Uh, there it. There is no, there is no other word for it. It is the banality of evil. These people, they're just, they're evil. It's Old Testament evil. Okay, it's Old Testament evil. Uh, it's Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, there's no, there's no other way. There's no other way to speak it. I don't know how they live with themselves. I'm not sure. Every, every mirror they look into either shatters or they can't see their reflection. These people are vampires. They're evil. Watch. A determined demagogue, unfortunately supported by members of his political party, other enablers. Uh, people who care more about uh, a future tax cut than uh, the sanctity of the Constitution are falling in line uh, behind him. They are trying to excuse some of the most outrageous things that you just recited. And I don't think the press has done enough to basically say, OK, the circus is here. You can watch the circus, but let's tell you what that means. Let's talk to people who have a real understanding of how uh, dictatorships evolve. Uh, let's look at the people that he admires and what they've already done. You know, back in 2016, we didn't have interviews with him. We didn't have a track record of four years in office. You know, there was a lot of speculation. And, you know, I understood that people wouldn't take what I said necessarily as gospel about what I thought could happen. I get that. But now we know. We, we've seen him and we've heard him. And so we need to right. do a better job of making it absolutely clear that someone who says these things, you know, maybe he wouldn't jail all of his political opponents. One is one too many. Maybe he wouldn't try to force out of business the you know members of the press who didn't agree with him. One is one too many. We go down the line and maybe this would be our last election because someone who will not accept the validity of an election is someone who doesn't believe in elections. He believes in his own power, his own right to power, and his demand that he be installed regardless of whether he gets the votes or not. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'm sitting here watching the comment section, screaming with you. I'm watching the comment section, screaming with you. Producer ALX is like, wait a second, this should have been a salty lib. Don't worry, we have salty libs for you later on the program. Hillary Clinton saying somebody won't accept the results of an election? Hillary Clinton saying that? Hillary Clinton saying you're going to lock up your political opponents? I guess it's better than, um, you know, sending them to, uh, sending them to Hillary Clinton's favorite little sleeper cell inside of the federal penitentiary in Manhattan, I suppose. I suppose that's better, but they want to kill Donald Trump anyway. They want to get rid of Donald Trump's secret service. So you're going to get arc incited no matter what. This kind of stuff is wild. I just don't know how else to explain it. We do have a verse of the day on the program all the time. There's no other way, to, there's no other lens to look at it through other than a spiritual lens. It's just evil. Satan's the author of all lies. 
it's demonic to lie. Like the worst lies you tell are the lies to yourself. Could you imagine being Hillary Clinton and spending the better part of the last eight and a half years mewling and bitching and griping and moaning that you're the president, that you're the president? She said it. She said it so many times. She said, I'm the pre I'm the rightful president. We have the super cut of it. And she's gonna go, she like imagine the world that you must live imagine the world you can live in. It's unsustainable. It's unsustainable. You must have shared truth in a society. Hillary Clinton going on air and saying that Donald Trump um won't accept the results of an election, that he'll claim to be president when he's not, that he'll lock up his political enemies. I mean, guys, like look in the mirror, it'll shatter. Look in the mirror. It'll shatter. Hillary, look up, look in a mirror. Woof. Either that or you won't see your reflection because you're a vampire. I don't know. I, you're like, I, I don't know. Um, I'm just a simple Christian and you read about Satan and you read about how Satan is simply the author of all lies. Uh, seek, you know, seeks to kill and destroy. And you just can't, you know, you just gotta, you, you gotta align those things. How do you get away with, how do you do it? How do you wake up in the morning? I don't know. How do you wake up in the morning? I don't know, but I do know this, that Hillary Clinton wouldn't be trotting out on MSNBC's morning show if they weren't terrified of what's happening right now. They see the poll numbers, they see the, that nobody's buying this, and then they see that they've overplayed their hand. Now we had Trump's attorney on yesterday, Christina Bob. I think I have an announcement for you today. ALX, tell me if I'm wrong. I think we have a big announcement for tomorrow with another Trump attorney coming on the program. I'll let producer ALX, um, <laughs> let me know if I can let me know if I can announce our guests uh, early. And so, uh, yes, Alina Haba on the program tomorrow. Very excited about that. Please tune in. Uh, so we'll have Alina Haba on the program. We'll be here to obviously defend the president when he can't talk, when he can't speak himself. He's not allowed to speak. But you can not, you begin to see the cracks in the facade. You are beginning to see how terrified they are that they're losing and more important that they've already lost. And we'll get to the Biden CNN interview that made all the news last night later in the show, but they've already lost. <gasps> what is going on now? And what you're starting to see are the stages of grief and you're, you're in like the, you're in the denial stage. Okay. No, no, grandpa's still with me. Like you're in the denial stage and they're starting to like realize that like they ran a dementia patient for the last five years in the white house as like a meat puppet to Obama. And it's like not work. It's like, go, it's actually going worse than Obama's terms were. And they're starting to realize that they failed. And so the best thing that they can do now is arbitrage and try and like stop Trump from becoming even more popular. Trump's gonna win. Trump's going to win. And he's going to be even more popular. So, they, so the, the fix is already in to just try and kneecap his next term. This is how you get clips like this. This is the clip that I asked for about the uh, debates. And this is a clip from yesterday, I'm sorry, from this weekend, where <laughs> some some doofus, some doofus slob on MSNBC is having a uh, apoplectic seizure over the idea of <laughs> Donald Trump debating Joe Biden, just making the argument, this guy's supposed to be a member of the press. I didn't know who this guy is. It looks like a, look, you know, I, I don't know who this guy is, okay? This guy's making the argument He's a member of the press making the argument that there shouldn't be presidential debates. You're not what the First Amendment was written for, pal. You're just an apparatchik and a toe sucker of power. You are a disgrace. You should be ashamed of yourself. Here we go. I'm curious for what Jen Psaki's reaction would have been like if she was still in the White House when she heard President Biden blurt out during a live interview that he was going to uh, debate because Biden folks don't want him to yeah. debate. They don't want to give Trump that platform and risk right. exposing Biden like that on national TV. It is Except I, I was I was thinking if I was in my old job from two yes. years ago, you also don't want him to say no because yeah. no is weak Die. and no is fear. So you have to say yes. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. What do you think? Let's put up a poll. Do you think that Joe Biden and Donald Trump will debate? Now, Donald Trump has said very MMA, very MMA style right here, right now, anytime, any place. Do like the debate today, Donald Trump said, I'll debate you at the courthouse. Come down. We're both in New York, Joe. Come down and debate. Do you think these debates will happen? Of course, we all believe they should happen. But do you think they will? Will they come up with some reason? 
Will they come up with some? Will they come up with some bird flu thing and say no, Joe Biden is too risky? I wonder. I really do. I hope they happen. I want them to happen. I want a debate between Trump and Biden. At I want what it's like 150 days to the election. I want a debate. At, uh, let's do 150 debates. Like I want this. Let's do it Lincoln Douglas style. Let's go to every county and let's have the debate. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, they can't stand on their own merits. They can't stand on their own record. They wilt and wither. Trust me, I do these debate shows with these libs. Destiny goes on Piers Morgan with me and destroy him. Like, it's just so easy. If Republicans just like fought fire with fire, it'd be so easy. Oh, yeah, hey, how many grandkids does Joe Biden have? Let's start with that. You're calling Joe Biden a decent man. How many grandkids he got? Anything? No? Does he beat his dog? Does he shower with his daughter? How many, like, okay, like, does he bail his dirtbag son out of prison? Every time he gets a chance, he's been doing that for Hunter since Hunter was uh, 18. That was the first time Hunter Biden was booked in in jail. You're gonna call Joe Biden decent with me, please, please. Shadow boxing, so easy, okay? So easy to destroy these people and they know it. And so let's have the debates. I really hope that it happens. The poll is up. Will it happen? Ladies and gentlemen, they can't stand on their own. They can't they can't stand on their own. Stormy Daniels goes up and takes the stand. She's apparently on the stand right now. Okay, so here's the live article. Donald Trump, uh, Stormy Daniels defends uh, real sex in her adult film career. Got it. Such moral people, such good people. It, it really is remarkable if you even like crack open and peer just a little bit into the blackness that is the uh, Hunter Biden laptop. How despicable the Biden family is. Do you know that Hunter Biden was kicked out of a sex club? like a, a satanic sex club in LA because he was too much of a monster. Do you know this? That the sex club owner is uh, testified against Hunter Biden saying that he's a monster and isn't allowed in inside of his satanic sex club. Do you know that? This is a moral people. This is <sighs> restoring decency, okay? This guy's at the White House Easter egg roll, like patting kids on the head. Just an aside. <laughs> Sometimes you just know too much, right? Or you just read the legal filings. Okay, so Stormy Daniels uh, was on the uh, was on the stage yesterday and uh, was on the stand yesterday in the stable, we might say, and uh, didn't do great. Okay, like didn't didn't have a great didn't have a great performance. In fact, everybody in the in the press who were it was in the courtroom were like, the "Trial's over." So what what you're doing is you're proving you're proving malice, and you're proving ill intent towards the accused. You're saying you hate them, and that's not going to go well with the jury. Okay, here's the summary of what happened with Stormy Daniels. She's on the stand right now. Now she also admits to hating Trump and previously posting online calling him an orange turd. During one exchange, Trump attorney Susan Necklace asked Daniels, "Quote: You despise him and make fun of him." Daniels responded, "Because he started it." Daniels testified how she met Trump at a celebrity golf tournament. She then went into great detail explaining how they allegedly had sex. Trump's lawyers, as you mentioned, asked for a mistrial, arguing the jury heard damaging testimony completely unrelated to the charges that Trump faces. Judge Juan Mershon agreed the testimony went too far, but ultimately denied that request for a mistrial. And Trump posted on True Social today, quote, it is a really bad feeling to have your constitutional right to free speech, such a big part of life in our country, so unfairly taken from you, especially when all of the sleazebags, lowlifes, and grifters that you oppose are allowed to say absolutely anything that they want. There are people who are defending Donald Trump, very smart people. Jonathan Turley is one of our favorite legal, legal experts, professor. He's written an, a ton of papers. He has on Substack where he uh, pontificates on the legal. He's not MAGA. Okay, let's just call it what it is. He's just like a clear-eyed legal scholar. Jonathan Turley saying the judge, the judge has every right to dismiss this case now after hearing the Stormy Daniels tire fire lot lizard testimony. Uh, you got to get rid of it. You got to get rid of it. Here we go. I mean, we've been saying all along that we still don't even know what the crime being alleged here is. I mean, th this, this trial is so bizarre because you still have a debate going on two weeks into the trial of what exactly Trump was trying to cover up as a crime. That puts aside all the weird ways that they use two dead misdemeanors and zap them back into life under this theory. So if he's going to let that go forward, he's going to let this go forward. But the judge had to know 
what was going to happen with Stormy Daniels on the stand. He was warned. He overruled objections. And now he says, well, you know, I really regret that. I'm shocked, shocked that I had a porn star in my courtroom. That's not going to work. Uh, now, has he committed reversible error? In my view, he has even before Stormy Daniels took the stand. Uh, can, he, can he rescue the trial through instructions? Probably not. But, you know, at the, the, at when the prosecution rests, the defense will stand up and ask for the dismissal of this case. That will be the next major opportunity for him to do the right thing. So, OK, you're going to sit there and tell me, I don't care who this guy is, Benny. That's Fox News. Fox News and Trump had kind of like a bit of a adversarial. But now Fox News is like going back. Right. Trump's our boy. OK. Trump's on the airwaves all the time, right? Fox calling in, Sean's show. You're going to say, that's Fox News. They're going to have a bias, okay? Show me show me a salty lib over on CNN. And I'm going to tell you that I can't. Why? Of course there's salty libs on CNN, you'll say. And I'll say, dear viewer, sweet, sweet prince, sweet friend, my brother in Christ, uh, CNN was actually harsher on Stormy Daniels than Fox was. CNN... And their legal experts had a uh, more rip roaring takedown of this case than Fox did. What? I can prove it. Here we go. The cross exam, boy, her responses were disastrous. I mean, do you hate Donald Trump? Yes, of course she does. That's a big deal. When the witness hates the person whose liberty is at stake, that's a big damn deal. And she's putting out tweets, fantasizing about him being in jail. That really undermines the credibility. The fact that she owes him $500,000, she, by order of a court, owes Donald Trump a half million dollars and said, I will never pay him. I will defy a court order. The defense is going to say she's willing to defy a court order. Why? She's not willing to respect an order of a judge. Why is she going to respect this oath she took? So I thought it went quite poorly on cross-exam. At the end of direct, I thought, okay, they got what they needed. But, but I think the cross is making real inroads. It, can I how in trouble is this? Many illegal experts are saying, listen, you're going to have, you're going to, at the very uh, least, you're going to have a hung jury here. And you're going to have like a bunch of, like a number of jurors, even from the Upper East Side of Manhattan being like, ah, that was not, th there's, there's no way. And the jury's going to be split and they're just going to like toss it. That's what you're going to get. The strategy here is of course going to be to draw this out as long as possible to keep Donald Trump off the campaign trail. Now, who, could possibly defend Donald Trump worse than a Democrat appointed judge. Like, imagine this. Imagine you're a judge, you're appointed by Democrats, you are a Democrat, and you're a federal judge, and you're brought on CNN of all places. Who do you who do you think that person is going to be in the bag for? You think that person is going to defend Donald Trump? There's no way that clip exists, right? Oh, we, we are living in strange times. Watch former federal judge, Democrat, appointed by Democrats, defend Donald Trump on CNN and say, this case is a tire fire. The material that came in was not relevant to this criminal case at all. And I think it shows that she was trying to get Trump. I actually thought there was a motive there. She said she hates him. She said she'd like to see him in prison. I think she was purposely throwing out this stuff to make sure the jury jurors were prejudiced, particularly the women jurors, but probably half of the men too, were really put off. Ooh, baby. Oh my goodness. So, <laughs> so they're, they're coming, they're coming back for more Stormy Daniels today. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Uh, again, I'll tell you what's about to happen. We have a good, not because we're particularly smart, just because our superpower is paying attention, being alive, pattern recognition. What's going on here is they never had a case. They're going to try and keep Donald Trump off the campaign trail. They're going to try and silence Donald Trump about this case. This is, these are the intended goals. Get ready. The judge is going to de de declare a mistrial. The judge is going to declare a mistrial, and he's going to say, no, we're going to, have to retry this thing all through the summer. All right? They're going to try not to let it go to the jury, because the jury is going to be like, this is garbage, right? Even like the MSNBC and CNN watchers are going to look like going to watch that. They're not supposed to watch TV, but anyway, they're going to watch that. They're going to be like, what the hell's going on here? And Donald Trump's going to be acquitted again. Mark my words. The goal, the strategy here now is to keep Trump off the campaign trail.